And I want to share some things that I think we are going to have to lean into if we're going to see God do the things that we feel inside of our spirits. How many of you know that what I feel and what you feel in here is not yet what we are seeing out there? And I believe that God wants us to prophesy with our lives so that things begin to shift in the atmosphere. And so the first thing, and I don't normally have points, so write them down. This may be the first and last time that I actually have a logical message. But the first thing is that we have to know when we are. We have to know when we are. You say, don't you mean where? No, actually, I mean when. Because there are times in life that knowing when you are is more important than knowing where you are. Case in point. I travel a lot. I live in Colorado Springs, which means I have to usually go through Chicago or Dallas to get anywhere because it's not a major hub. And when you switch from Colorado Springs to Dallas, there is a time change. I remember I took all of my boys with me to a youth conference. We landed in Dallas, and it was in the days of stupid phones. Do you remember stupid phones? Stupid phones did not change time zones. And so it was a stupid phone time. And I looked at my stupid phone and I said, guys, we got two hours. Let's go get barbecue. And one of my more intelligent sons said, mom, you said there was only an hour during this layover. And I said, well, I was wrong. Look at what the phone says. And so you know what happened. We went to Dickie's barbecue. And when I arrived at my departure gate, the flight had already left because I did not know when I was. We are in a time period that is perilous and a time period that is wonderful. We are in what is described in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And I'm going to read it from the message. This is God talking. He says, this is what I will do in the last days. I will pour my spirit on everybody and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy, and your young men will see visions and your old men will experience dreams from God. The Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. Notice it didn't say, and they will criticize. See, actually what we are really good at is criticizing, but it takes no anointing to criticize. That is just echoing a problem, but it takes a whole lot of anointing to prophesy, which is to declare an answer in the midst of chaos. We are a generation that needs to prophesy. We need to speak the word of God into our future and understand that the word of God has the power in it to shape and shift things. I look at the mess right now and I want to criticize but I know that I am an ambassador of heaven walking the face of the earth and I don't have the right to criticize if I have been entrusted with the word of God to prophesy. We need to be a generation who speak the answer rather than echo the problem. We need to prophesy. And it's interesting that twice in these verses, it talks about men servants and female servants, women servants, and it also says sons and daughters. See, I don't know how everything began, but the future is not female. The future is male and female. The future is sons and daughters. The future is all of us together. I get it. I get it that women haven't had as much voice, but we do not add value to the women by taking it from the men. We get our value from God. And so I want to just do something. I want to say to every man that is here, Thank you, because I feel right now that there is such an attack against men. And I believe that you are men who fear the Lord and you celebrate women. You would not be here listening to some crazy Sicilian godmother on a Saturday morning. So I want to honor you and honor your voice. And I'm sorry that everything in our culture is trying to dishonor the men and sexualize the women. But we're better than that. We are guardians of eternity. And we know that an attack on gender is an attack on the image of God because God created us in his image, male and female. And because there has been wounding in the place of 
male and female. Our culture has tried to blend the genders, but the answer is not making all of us the same. The answer is in us being the best male and the best female and understanding that it is God that makes up the gaps in our life. But we're gonna have to prophesy because we gotta know when we are. We are in a time period that needs us to be able to say, earth, earth, hear ye the word of the Lord.